Hey guys, this is Tavia Sobi, and today, eat your rice. Eat all of it. That is the take home lesson I got from playing Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, a charming and surprisingly thorough adventure in rice growing. That includes all the blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to bring each single solitary grain of rice from the field all the way to your dinner table. Anyway, like the orphans of Nacho Libre, I now apologize to all the farmers in the world for every kernel of rice that I've ever left on my plate. I am so, so, so sorry. Then again, as someone who remembers seeing farmers tilling their fields with water buffaloes and drying their rice near the side of the road as a kid growing up in the Philippines, I really should have known better. Granted, rice farming these days is nowhere near as old school as that in a lot of places. Still, knowing about all the back-breaking effort it took in the old days to nurse those golden kernels into white polished pearls of delicious goodness really makes me see things from a different perspective. All it took was several days spent with a video game, of all things, while playing as a goddess. A tiny spoiled little goddess with a trusty hoe. And by that, I mean a hole for farming, by the way. <laughs> Let's just hope that Wayne Brady doesn't drop by and mistakenly try to choke it. Farming tools aside, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin is an interesting beast. Part action RPG and part farming simulation, the game attempts to marry two different genres into one singular entity. It's certainly not the first time that something like this has been attempted, something that the Rune Factory series can attest to. At the same time, it's still a rare enough occurrence that it's notable. Add the game's colorful art style and distinct designs, and it's no surprise that Sakuna of Rise and Ruin was actually one of the games I was really looking forward to this year. Then again, fusing genres can be like fitting a square peg into a round hole sometimes. Which raises the question, is Sakuna of Rise and Ruin an example of perfect multi-genre harmony, or is it a jack of all trades and a master of none? Let's take a closer look then, shall we? So the Japanese have a saying that seven gods reside in each grain of rice. It's a proverb that is often used to teach kids not to waste their food. It also reflects just how interwoven the Shinto religion is in Japanese culture. In Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, you play the role of one god who finds herself tasked with growing the familiar food staple as a punishment from the elder goddess. Poor Sakuna's hardship starts when a ragtag band of hungry mortals accidentally find their way into the land of the gods while fleeing pursuit. Along the way, they're met by a feisty and totally drunk Sakuna, who sends the group's tormentor blasting off like Team Rocket after the ruffian makes the mistake of calling her a child. Anyway, everything would have been fine if it just ended there. Unfortunately for Sakuna, this meeting triggers a domino effect that causes the spoiled and pampered goddess to be exiled to the island of demons. Now, fortunately for Sakuna, the pint-sized goddess is blessed with ginormously good genes. The daughter of war god Takeribi and harvest goddess Toyohana, Sakuna quickly learns that she has inherited her parents' special abilities, which she never really got to use thanks to her lazy lifestyle. This divine dichotomy is at the center of the gameplay, which has Sakuna battling demonic fiends to gather meat and resources, and also tending to a small field in order to grow rice. Growing rice is especially important as it ties to Sakuna's stat progression. In traditional RPGs, for example, character progression and leveling up is typically tied to defeating enemies. In Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, however, stat progression comes from your rice harvests. Sakuna will get a boost in her various stats based on how well you did in raising your rice crop. This makes it especially important not to neglect farming if you want to ensure that Sakuna becomes powerful enough to beat the island's demon denizens and bosses. A lot of times, all it takes is one successful harvest to turn a boss that you were barely damaging before into a more manageable challenge. I mean, when the game says its slogan is rice is power, it actually means that in a literal sense. Now, while there have been many popular farming games over the years, none of them are quite as meticulous as Sakuna of Rice and Ruin is, particularly when it comes to rice. The steps you need to take read almost like an essential checklist for Rice Farming 101. And that's from creating fertilizer and preparing your field, to managing water levels and processing your final product. Whether you have zero familiarity with rice farming, or even fancy yourself as being knowledgeable in the subject, chances are you will learn something that you did not know before about the process of, well, growing rice, particularly when it comes to the old-fashioned way of doing it. For example, 
Japanese actor Hiroyuki Morisaka, burst out laughing when the game's developers showed him the game's system for sorting rice seeds. This method, an old technique known as Deisuisen in Japanese, involved mixing in mud in a water bucket to let the bad seeds float up top. So Morisaki, who hosts a farming-based show called Hokkaido Agricultural Paradise, saw this and pretty much went, Hold up, do you actually have mud sorting in this game? I mean, do people even know what that is? <laughs> Yeah, so unless you're an agriculture historian or a bona fide rice fanatic, the answer is probably no. I mean, that certainly was the case with me, and I fancy myself as someone who knows more about rice growing than the average person. Whether it be gathering waste from the commode, I mean seriously, you gather poop <laughs> from the outhouse. So whether it be gathering waste from the commode, to make fertilizer, to properly spacing your rice plants, or even releasing ducks into your paddy field, to help take out pests, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin is meticulous to a fault when it comes to emulating the rice production process, so much so that it does start to feel like work sometimes. It's an aspect of the game that will likely be polarizing the players. On one hand, I could see folks who seek an immersive experience, appreciating the game's faithfulness to emulating the painstaking process of growing rice. On the other hand, I can see other players also viewing it as busy work, especially once the newness wears off and they've been farming for multiple years in the game. This is especially true for folks who just want to enjoy the action platforming part of the Sakuna of Rise and Ruin and feel like they're getting bogged down by micromanaging their farm. The good news is that you eventually gain skills that make the different aspects of farming either faster or more efficient. Personally, I thought the game's farming mechanics were great overall, but I also understand if it's a bit too much for some folks, especially if they just want to focus on fighting monsters and exploring dungeons. On the plus side, working so hard, and I mean really hard, <laughs> To improve the quality of my rice in this game has made me not want to waste even a single bead of rice when I am eating now. <laughs> in fact, I now take it as a personal insult when I see folks leave rice on their plate. And by that I mean in real life. Yes, I know there's something wrong with me. Actually, there are a lot of things <laughs> that are wrong about me, but I digress. Speaking of fighting monsters, the combat in Sakuna of Rice and Ruin is another strength of the game. The 2D side-scrolling nature of the game's combat portion has a vanillaware feel to it, and should float the boat of fans who love games such as Muramasa the Demon King. Sakuna's main attacks are based on two weapons, a one-handed armament for dealing weak but fast slashes, and a two-handed weapon for dishing out slow but powerful strikes. She also has an assortment of special attacks that consume a special gauge, and this replenishes over time. These special attacks pack a wallop and can send foes crashing into each other, Kind of like a bowling ball hitting a bunch of pins. The interactivity of the game's environs is one of the fun parts of Sakuna's combat, allowing you to send foes hurtling through rocky spikes for added damage, for example. I guess you can say that you rock them like a hurricane. <laughs> the dad jokes just keep on coming, and, uh, and I'm not even a dad. <laughs> Sakuna can also use her mother's divine raiment to perform various special moves. So it is like a special divine piece of cloth that she has around her. Yeah, so these special actions include, say, moving to a foe's blind spot right behind them, swinging enemies around so they hit other enemies, and even weakening, like, more powerful foes. The raiment also doubles as an exploration tool, allowing Sakuna to grab ledges and vault up to places she normally wouldn't be able to reach. Add a parry system that lets you block and counter by tilting your stick toward the direction of an enemy attack, and you have a fast-paced combat system that ends up being a lot of fun once you familiarize yourself with it. It just feels so good to attack a swarm of enemies, stop mid-combo to counter a foe, dish a ton of damage, then use your raiment to switch to an enemy's back and start the process all over again. Honestly, I enjoyed the combat so much that this part of the game could stand out on its own. It was that enjoyable. It's too bad then that the game has a tendency to cut the action part short with the way it implements its day and night cycles. Come nighttime, Enemies become much more powerful, and attacks that used to do decent damage can be reduced to just inflicting one point of damage per hit. Granted, older stages eventually become manageable, even at night, as Sakuna's stats grow. For stages that you're going through during the initial cycles, however, the gap in strength is just too much and you're pretty much forced to call it a day, no pun intended, <laughs> and well, just go home. Granted, this is also a way for the game to balance the farming and combat aspects so you don't neglect one for the other. I just wish there was a way for time to stop during dungeon diving so I could fight and explore to my heart's content. It's just a bit disheartening to be close to finally solving a dungeon after much trial and error, 
only for night to come and having to cut your adventure short. It basically bogs down a combat and exploration system that's otherwise excellent. Difficulty can also seesaw due to the game's leveling system. New bosses can be too powerful until you level up adequately while older stages become too easy when Sakuna bolsters her stats. It feels a bit strange from an action game standpoint, but actually makes more sense when you consider that the game is an RPG where you essentially raise your levels to make fights easier. Presentation is another strong point for Sakuna, which goes the extra mile in fleshing out its world. The game does a really good job with its attention to detail, whether it be its old school farming implements, or even the way each rye stock is beautifully animated. The changing of the seasons is also impressive, and is even reflected in the various stages, which switch their appearance to match the time of year. The use of traditional Japanese instruments also add an extra layer of immersion to the experience as well, making it feel like you've taken a trip back in time. The attention to detail applies to the game's character designs, which includes its various creatures and bosses. Everything is just so well rendered and animated that the game looks like a moving painting at times, because it's almost kind of like meditation, in a sense. Storytelling, meanwhile, starts out strong as it chronicles Sakuna's transformation from an entitled brat to a hardworking goddess who learns the value of earning your keep. At the same time, it gets a little bit stunted midway through your adventure. You can trigger dinner scenes with the group at night, as well as sub-events with the various characters as you progress further into the game. The narrative, however, can lack some cohesion as you get more involved in the game's farming and exploration. The drought in plot development is especially noticeable when you get stuck and find yourself unable to unlock the next stage, causing you to start having silent dinners with your companions. It's a bit of a missed opportunity as most of the characters are interesting and likable. I just like how each have their own individual stories, as well as their own character development, as the story continues. I just feel like I'm not able to fully explore those character stories sometimes, since I'm so busy tending to my rice farm or making sure I finish dungeons before nighttime comes. On the plus side, there's definitely always something to do in Sakuna, whether it be managing your fields, fighting demons, or finding materials for crafting weapons and armor. It can get repetitive after a while, which is honestly an issue with the farming genre in general. It's actually one reason I'm glad that the game has combat and dungeon exploration, because it provides a nice break from the farming, but even that can start to feel like a daily grind sometimes when you fall into a pattern of rinse, lather, and repeat while going through the motions. Then again, I usually only start to feel that way once I've been playing for several hours straight. Time just seems to fly by when I'm playing Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, which actually I think is a good thing. Anyway, move over, Uncle Ben. <laughs> There's a new rice god in town. Overall, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin lets you have your grains and eat them too by serving up a nice heaping of action alongside one of the most detailed and meticulous systems for rice farming that you'll ever see in a game. Admittedly, the agriculture side can feel like work sometimes, and gameplay can become a bit repetitive as you go through multiple years. Its uncanny attention to detail and refreshing take on the farming genre, however, makes Sakuna a game worth adding to your daily diet. As always, if you have any thoughts or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Once again, this is Tabi Asobi, and thank you for watching.